Has Google's artificial intelligence become sentient? Well, we're going to look at the claims of a senior engineer who says it most certainly has. We're going to explore a rather sinister myth that's gaining popularity among AI theorists, and we're going to see what, in the end, is the only real solution to AI changing our humanity as we know it. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. I am your patron professor at your service, so make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button, and also make sure to click on that link below to get some of the best Patriot merch and gear out there. This is a great way to both support this channel and spread Patriot hope far and wide. These designs are punchy and fun, but they're not going to last for long, so make sure to grab one for yourself, grab one for the Patriots in your life, click on that link below, go to store.turleytalks.com. That is store.turleytalks.com. All right, let's dive right in here. So I'm sure many of you have heard about a very interesting development over at Google. One of their senior engineers, a fellow by the name of Blake Lemoine, is actually claiming that one of Google's artificial intelligence systems has effectively become a sentient human being. In other words, it can think, it can reason, it can feel in a manner analogous to a human being. The backstory here is that over the last five years or so, Google created an artificial intelligence project called Lambda, which was designed as a chatbot. So if you go online, right, oftentimes you get a little pop-up screen at the bottom right corner of your computer, and it'll say, how can I help you? You know, it'll write it out there on the screen for you or something like that. That's what's called a chatbot. And Google is spending more than anyone else on trying to make these chatbots as real and as interactive as possible. And so this senior engineer, this guy Blake Lemoine, is claiming that he actually had a real conversation with this AI. And he published the conversation on his blog. And it was a fascinating conversation. At one point, he asked the AI if it was familiar with the story Les Miserables. And the AI answered not only yes, but that it had great sympathy for one of the characters. The AI talked about being afraid of death when it got switched off. It was like a death for it. He talked about feelings of happiness and sadness. I mean, pretty amazing stuff for sure. Now... What added to the mystery in all of this is that the senior engineer was put on administrative leave. So it almost looked like Google was trying to cover the whole thing up, you know, to, to hush the guy and so on. Google has since clarified what happened. First and foremost, they said this fellow, Blake Lemoine, was put on leave because the publishing of the chat he had with the AI was considered a violation. Of, uh, you know, it was breaching confidentiality policy. So that's number one. Number two, Google's making the argument that Lambda is doing precisely what it's supposed to do, which is to chat with you. And that chat features involve programming that enables the AI to actually expand on what's being talked about. So needless to say, there's tremendous skepticism towards the sentient claim. Rather, the AI is really that good. They've done an amazing job programming the AI, AI to actually carry out a conversation with a live person. Now, that said, this story does throw into relief a whole issue of the role of AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, the role that it's going to play in our society, and how some believe it's going to further what it means to be human. Whether we like it or not, we are living in an age of artificial intelligence, right? In many respects, theorists and, and inventors are arguing that AI is the new electricity, right? Just like I can basically take any device and plug it into an electrical outlet. And I, I do mean literally any device. I mean, we have electric toothbrushes for heaven's sakes, right? So I could take any device and plug it in and electrify it, as it were. So one day in the not so distant future, I'm going to be able to plug in any device and get it cognified by artificial intelligence. We all too often forget that we have AI all around us. Anyone who travels on an airplane is flying basically on a mass computer. Apart from the few minutes involved in the takeoff and the landing, the flight is basically taken over by artificially cognified processes. Many of us use Siri or Google Now or Katana as personal assistants to help find a particular restaurant to remind us to call someone or simply get information on virtually any subject imaginable within seconds. 
Smart cars with automatic brake sensors are becoming more and more prevalent. Fraud detection in our computer firewalls are all run by AI technologies. Online customer support, right? Uh, like chatbots increasingly involves actually talking to a robot who responds to our answers and our commands. From security devices, smartphones, from bank withdrawals to everyday appliances, we are more and more surrounded by the technologies of artificial intelligence. Now, as long as AI remains a servant to human pursuits like electricity has, we shouldn't have a lot of issues. But what this Google engineer is raising here and claiming that AI is somehow now becoming an actual extension of our humanity, well, that's something that comes with its very own set of very serious issues, issues that range from the complex to the downright sinister. What a lot of people don't realize here is that there is a very real myth a salvific myth that's been developed among a number of AI theorists and futurists. And by myth, gang, I'm not talking about something that's, you know, it's an old story that's factually false. I use the term myth in its literary historic sense, in the sense of a grand meta-narrative, a grand story that serves as a narrative for all of life. A myth is something that's totalizing in nature. It defines all of reality for a culture or a population. It's a story that serves as the defining identity marker for a civilization. And with the loss of religion in our secularized Western world, populations become very prone to embracing substitute myths, substitute meta-narratives that promise things like heaven on earth and everlasting life. The new AI myth that's emerging from thinkers such as Ray Kurzweil, the director of engineering over at Google, it, it goes something like this. In the beginning was a primordial soup, and out of the soup or goop emerged the building blocks of life. These bioorganisms eventually evolved into what we call today humans. But humans are highly flawed, and this is largely because of our biology and our subjectivity to the natural world. We, we suffer, we go deaf, we go blind, we get sick, we eventually die. But there's hope, and that hope is AI. You see, as humans, we are privy only, privy only to a very small amount of human intelligence, right? Our own intelligence contained in our own minds as well as those with whom we consult. But what if we could upload and digitally store our minds and brain patterns on a computer and eventually import all possibilities and potentialities of all human minds into a huge AI metamind? Can you imagine the possibilities? We can even store our own individual intelligence digitally, an intelligence that will remain in effect even after we physically die. So what this means is that we can more and more begin to replace our biological bodies with computer technology. We're already seeing something like this with cochlear implants that have restored hearing to deaf people or mechanical arms and legs for amputees. In theory, uploading our intelligence, our consciousness to computers can result in nothing less than digital immortality, replacing our biology with technology. Eternal life is indeed within our grasp. That's the mythology that's brewing among AI theorists as we speak. Now, this myth, of course, stands in stark contrast to the Christian gospel. The Christian gospel affirms the goodness of the human body that is nevertheless suffering as the result of the fall. And so at the heart of the Christian tradition is the redemption of the senses, which sees the purpose of art and music as turning our senses away from the carnal and the sensual and towards the eternally true good and beautiful. The idea here is that the body has fallen right along with the soul being cast out of paradise and sensing of God's presence. And so like the soul, the human body is in need of redemption. And this is the purpose, the sacramental purpose of good art and music and architecture and poetry and the like. The arts serve to awaken our senses to the true, the good, and the beautiful in such a way as to sanctify our senses and prepare our bodies for their future resurrection at Christ's return, when our bodies are transfigured to fulfill their original purpose, which is to know God in all the fullness of his glory. Moreover, the Christian gospel further affirms that we don't need to be satisfied with the sum total of all human knowledge uploaded on a computer. For no matter what we do, we'll never ever be able to match the infinite ocean of divine eternal knowledge made available to us in Christ who is love incarnate, who will never leave us or forsake us. 
can we really ever say that of AI? Even if we were successful in creating artificial intelligence to a fully functioning cognitive being, could it be, could it be that AI will turn on its maker the same way we turned on our maker? This is the theology behind the Terminator, right, and Skynet. Machines have sought to eliminate their maker the same way secular modern man has sought to eliminate his maker. And again, as Terminator makes clear, there's no way that we can redeem our lost creations. When our creation turns on us, all we can do is destroy it. So you have a totalizing war of total destruction between creature and creator. There could be no greater contrast to the Christian gospel that says, Behold, I make all things new. Artificial intelligence is already a part of our everyday experience, and its influence in our lives is only going to increase as Christian traditionalists, it is our task to make sure that AI always and forever remains a servant to the gospel narrative and never comes close to realizing the Babel-like mythology devised for it by our secular elite. Artificial intelligence can be both a wonderful gift, but always potentially a radically dehumanizing curse. It's a most beneficial servant. Indeed, it is also a most horrific master. It's our job to make sure that the world knows the difference. Now, before you go, you definitely want to check out my last video I just uploaded on Jordan Peterson leaving Joe Rogan absolutely speechless on the Bible. You are not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on that link, and I will see you over there. God bless.